Hello everyone, back again with uh, Search for a Nonviolent Future, and we're still talking about what I called last time a peak experience, uh, because I think we can say a little bit more about it, what uh, makes it a peak experience. Uh, when you have that kind of uh, change in your consciousness, which is a kind of intense focus. Uh, and if you go to page 65, down on the bottom I quote somebody who was pretty badly, badly beaten up during the bus uh, freedom rides, the bus rides, uh, is still in the civil rights movement. And uh, he, he was asked to comment uh, about being beaten up. He said, don't, doesn't it hurt? And he said, you feel the pain, but you don't become bitter. You don't become hostile. You sort of lose yourself. You become involved in the circumstances of others. So I think this is a profound secret that you rise above yourself. It doesn't mean you're not aware of the pain anymore, but it does mean that it is now in a context. You have some perspective and that gives you an ability to endure it. And right now we're talking about physical pain, but this could also work for emotional pain. It gives you the ability to endure it. And when you endure it, it is transformed into a creative force. And that is what affects those police or those firemen or whoever it is uh, on the other side of the hoses. And when this happens, it always gives you a, a deeper sense of meaning. And this is the precise opposite of what we have talked about earlier in the book, the discovery by my colleague and friend Rachel McNair, uh, perpetration-induced traumatic stress. If those police and firemen that we were talking about yesterday actually f injured the marchers, they would have been injuring themselves. So when you use nonviolence to, in, when, sorry, when you use violence to injure another person, you injure yourself. Conversely, you know, this is only good science. When you use nonviolence to non-injure another person, you elevate yourself. You get a higher sense of meaning. You rise a little bit above your own personal framework, which is exactly what enabled Gandhi to make that tremendous change when he was thrown off the, chain, the train uh, in South Africa. Remember, instead of saying, I've got to get even with those people, he said, this is man's inhumanity to man, and I'm going to see what I can do about it. Very good. Well, I've been appreciating your comments on these little sessions, and uh, please keep them coming. We'd love to be in contact with you.